I was the first woman vice president at that record company, or practically any record company. Um, it was there was a different feeling. It was like we were the we were the pioneers. I was the only woman on earth that didn't have to be an assistant first. I just I I don't know how it happened. It was like I just uh, because I had been at interview and I already knew all these people. Like in other words, the New Yorker who was writing about me in Talk of the Town, you know, every other week. Born in Greenwich Village and then moved to Queens. I went to art school, museum school, after music and art, and then I had one woman show with Boston at Harvard. But once I got back to New York and was part of that Whitney Museum program, but then I started working for Andy Warhol. When Andy met me, I was a painter, but when he offered me, Glenn O'Brien offered me a job at Interview. And that was really the beginning of me doing business and not really being an artist. But all the years and all the rock stars and all different talent people I worked with um, I still saw, th I still th see things as an artist. Although I did interview everybody, that became my art for a while. So I was interviewing whether it was Paloma Picasso or Jan Michael Vincent or Carol Kane. I met Andy Warhol and I went down to the factory and he said, I love your voice, I love your name, and you're going to be in all our movies. Now he might have said that to a lot of people, but I did get to be in some of his movies. I got to be in Bed and then I got to be in all the Paul Morrissey movies. Bed was Andy's last movie. Paul Morrissey uh, made Women in Revolt and uh, Trash, and then I was the star of something called Madame Wang's. I, I dressed pretty wild at that time, and Andy would instruct me a lot about what to wear. He thought you should dress straight, and he would point out people on the street and the way they looked, and he, the people that he liked the looks would be like a kind of Burberry looking, very straight trench coat, hmm. very, very straight stuff. He taught me like, Whenever you go walking, the town is always talking about the blonde family. You know, we always thought we were special and should be noticed, you know. But he also told me to laugh at jokes. He told great jokes. He was one of the best joke tellers. I've been Orthodox well, it was 13 years, you know. So, um, it's a, you know, I like this way of life. Two things changed with the clothes is that you're always covered up. I also only wear skirts. I don't wear pants at all. 90% <laughs> of my things have wear and tear. If I show you part of my closet, you'll see inside some of the Chanel things, there's just actually, the things are totally, totally in pieces. I bought this maybe five years ago for my mom, and my mother has this great quality. If I really like something a really lot that she's wearing, she'll give it to me, you know. Like I heard Mika Erdogan once did with uh, Jerry Hall when she was married to Mick Jagger. She had a sable coat on and Jerry said she liked it and so she gave her the coat. And a guy named Mark Walsh was, I would call, you know, it's funny because as I said, I never took drugs, but he was like a dealer. He was like, that was like my drug dealer because he would come and he would have a vintage Chanel or a vintage Balenciaga. I just like had to have those things. This is one of my favorite Chanel's ever. It really makes your figure look perfect. Somehow most of these Chanel suits, or at least these older ones, they give you the added little shoulder, they cut somehow the middle, so like you just you, you just have a perfect figure in a Chanel suit. No wonder you like them. <laughs> my son made this part of this one. He, he likes to melt coins and he melted this and made it into a uh, ring and then this was one of the Elsa Peretti things I guess and there was a shell so I wear this a lot. Well I was in Anton Parrish Presents and that's a very important um, TV show that was the first show that had no censoring. Mostly it was famous not only because we were po political and against the war but because of this semi-nudity here and there. Now the idea of seeing like my breasts on TV when I like I got religious and I have a son and all you know I like I'm kind of a little horrified about it but the truth is I that was me and I I love that all the people that came to us were unknowns you know boy George that day um, Luther had been doing it forever but he'd been known as a jingle maker and then he became a big big star he still couldn't get on the cover of Rolling Stone which was his exactly what he wanted but they would just sit right down with you and they did it with me with Michael Jackson when he still did Off the Wall oh, that was his first cover eventually but at the beginning they'd say that's not our audience I work with Michael he was becoming the biggest star on earth and he was like a child in a lot of ways he'd take your pocketbook and he'd empty it out right and that's always a surprise when someone um, empties your pocketbook out so everyone wanted autographs already from him you know his whole life really so I said, well, why don't you just sign MJ, like Andy Warhol just signs AW a lot. 
And he said, oh no, I would never do that. These are my fans. These people made me. I would never do that. I guess it's a romantic idea I have maybe, but I, I just think creating your own thing is, is exciting, you know. So how I created is I made this exciting company and we work with all kind of interesting people and that became creative. Yeah, but half of my life, like the teachers would say I was effervescent. Why? Because I would look at them. Most people don't look at you when you're talking. So I would look and I would tell people, um, you know, how they looked and compliment them. That was pretty easy because I usually am fascinated by what people are wearing, what they're doing, what they're saying, what their lives are. I love to meet new people. I love to meet clients that are doing all kind of different things.